Hi everyone, it's Vicky here. Welcome to the notes notes. Today we're looking at a very useful bound note. It might seem easy, but let's check if you really know how to use it. So here I'm using Houdini version 19.5, but the same thing will work in previous versions as well. And I'm using the built desktop type. Let's start by dropping down test geometry crack. Let's dive in and create the bound note. Let's plug it in and display it. So now you can see the bound node created a bounding box for our crack geometry. And the bounding box is the smallest cuboid or a box that can fit in our geometry. So as I scroll the timeline, you can see the box changes as well. And this is because our geometry is animated. So it changes the area it occupies. So let's go to the bound node and look at the settings. The first one we have is group. So we can choose from the groups on our geometry that we want to include for the bound box. So for example, I can just use the head and have a bounding box just for that head. So if I template crack, now we can see we have a bounding box around his head. The next option is keep original. And this is what I just tried to do. So I template uh, the crack geometry, but instead of doing that, I can just keep original and now I can see both crack and the bounding box. Next, we have create bounding geometry. If I switch this off, you will see that we no longer have the bounding box. And this is especially useful if you only want to generate these attributes, but you don't want to have the actual bounding box geometry. So I will switch this on for now, and I will also switch off keep original. The next one is create when bounds empty. You can see that the description says that if there is no input geometry or the specified group is empty, a zero size bounding box will be created at the origin. So if I disconnect it and go to the settings, now we can see the bounding box that has been created. Let's plug it back in. And now we have the bounding type. So we can either use the box that is here by default, or we can actually choose from a sphere or a rectangle. But let me just delete the group so that we can see it better. So for the sphere, you can see we have crack geometry and then the sphere around him. For a rectangle, it's just a flat geometry that shows us the area that geometry uh, that we plugged in is using. So let's start with the box because we have some other settings here. So by default, we have a box that is always facing up. And if we switch on oriented box uh, geom geometry, oriented bounding box, you will see that now it's rotating together with the geometry. So it's trying to better fit uh, this geometry inside. Now we can switch on divisions, which will allow us to add some subdivisions to our box. Usually I keep this switched off just to make everything faster. A thing that I use very often is the lower padding and upper padding as well as the minimum size. So you can decide on the minimum size that you want for this bounding box and you can decide it for X, Y and Z axis. You can also add some padding to each side. So let's say you're running a simulation and you want to have one meter each side for your bounding box for the simulation. This is where you can set it. So what I usually do is copy parameter from lower padding X and paste it over here, over here, and in all these three values as well. So now when I change one value, for example, this one that I uh, copied, referenced everywhere, it will change everywhere else as well. So now I know that each side has an additional one meter in size. Okay, let's change it back to zero and let's have a look at three remaining options. So I can switch on these options to create additional attributes. For example, the bounds group. So now if I create a delete node, in that delete node, I will see bounds group, which I can remove. So let's switch keep original. So now I have the bounding box and our geometry. So now if I go to delete, it deletes the bounding box or I can reverse it. Now I keep the bounding box, remove everything else. We can also export the X form attribute, which gives us the transform information of that bounding box. And we also have the rat attribute, which describes the extent of the bounding box shape. 
So let's now switch to a sphere and see what options we have here. So I can change orientation of that sphere. So uh, the axis that is facing, I can switch on accurate bounds. So now it will be a bit sm slower, but it will try to fit that geometry more precisely. I can change the minimum radius. So the same as in the box. So for the box, we could change the minimum size. For the sphere, we have the minimum radius and I can also change the padding. So exactly the same. And finally, let's have a look at the rectangle. So I can again switch on oriented bounding rectangle. So this time it will rotate with the geometry, but I will switch this off. I can change the distance. So how high I want this rectangle to be. I can change the direction. And I also have lower padding and also I can transform it a bit if I need to. So you can see it's very similar to the bounding box, but this time we have a flat geometry, flat grid. Great. So here's the bound note for you, but I also have some bonus information. So you can also use a box note to do exactly the same. So you can see the box node has this input at the top. So I can plug in my geometry there. And now when I display it, you can see it does exactly the same thing as our bounding box. I can also adjust the axis divisions. I can also adjust the size of this bounding box if I drop down transform node after. And I can also do the same thing with a sphere. So if I drop down the sphere again, you can see it has an additional input. If I plug it in, you can see the sphere acts as a bounding sphere for our geometry. So now you have three options. You can use bound, you can use sphere, you can use box. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.